This is the high school class of 1980. This is the class of 2000. And this is the class of 2020. Notice anything different between these two images? Look at the men. Now look at the picture from the class of 2020. You don't see men, do you? Those are boys, aren't they? Are you a man who feels like you're losing your edge? Are you getting all you can from your workouts? Are you satisfied with your romantic life? Researchers have found that male sperm count has plummeted by 50% since the 1970s. Erectile dysfunction, social anxiety, low confidence, fear of talking to women, obesity, low sperm counts, difficulty building muscle, depression, and lack of motivation. They're all problems modern men are facing more than any generation ever before. I kept feeling worse and worse. I had no energy at all and no sex drive either. But I could feel something just wasn't right. It didn't happen overnight. And then I was diagnosed with depression and I realized that something was seriously wrong with me. And then I figured out that this might have something to do with a testosterone deficiency. They are all associated with lower testosterone level. It's said testosterone is the hormone that makes men, well, men. It sculpts the male body, increasing muscle mass and bone strength, and molds the male mind, fueling libido, wrist touch, and the pursuit of status. Since 1950, the testosterone level in men have been dropping up to 1% a year. In some context, the average 30-year-old guy today would have the same testosterone levels as a guy who was 60 years old in 1950. So what's causing such a rapid decrease in testosterone? Soy. Does it feminize you? Does it give you man boobs? Does it lower? testosterone. There's even like residual estrogen in our tap water because of birth control. The massive influence of estradiol from the birth control pill, which leaks into the water table and does not get filtered out through municipal water supplies. Tap water contains things like endocrine disruptors, hormone disruptors that can negatively impact reproductive health in males. And the advent of BPAs and plastics, drinking and eating and touching a lot of these materials which leach through our skin, get into our bodies and act as estrogen mimicking compounds. The amount of testosterone in your body may be equivalent to a pinch of sugar in an Olympic swimming pool, and yet it has these profound effects. However, the fact remains that men are becoming less of, well, men, not only in their behavior and in their dress, but also in their biological makeup. Men now are weaker, slower, and less intelligent. We are simply put, not the men our fathers are. Humanity is facing a crisis right now. Men are getting weaker and softer both mentally and physically, and it's all because of one thing, testosterone. We're all getting old. Low testosterone. Energy. Drive. Low testosterone. Testosterone levels. Testosterone. Performance. Testosterone levels. Testosterone. Sex drive. Testosterone. Be the best you can be. Today, men are experiencing a population level decline in testosterone levels, and it's happening to all men, including adolescent and young adult men. And why is this collapse in testosterone bad? Because testosterone is what makes men men. Testosterone is a very important male hormone. If a man doesn't have any testosterone, he loses a lot of characteristics that makes him a man. I mean, it's the male super hormone, right? It's the thing that drives us towards success. It's the thing that influences motivation, energy levels. And as men's testosterone drops, they get pudgy, they lack motivation, guys get man boobs. Like it is the key hormone for men being man. Testosterone is what gives us ambition, drive. It's what pushes us to achieve, to win, to dominate. It's what gives us our masculine features. To take away a man's testosterone is to take away everything that makes him a man. And yet, that is what modern society is systematically doing to you right now. And it's not even just testosterone. Between the years 1973 and 2011, male sperm count dropped by 59%. We have less than half the sperm count from just 50 years ago. And based on predictions, sperm count will reach zero by 2045. Um, but there's lots of kids on there in like the bodybuilding communities who are in their early teens, early late teens, early 20s that are a lot of them even some not, but some getting their blood work done beforehand and having abysmal testosterone levels. They're mm -hmm. talking about how their testosterone are in like the one to two hundreds nanograms per deciliter, which is on the, like, the very, very bottom of the scale. And these guys getting on testosterone because it's like, what's the trade off? Like, do I start testosterone therapy and feel great, feel like a normal person and be able to go to the gym and feel be healthy? And and sacrifice not being able to have kids. Like it's a very heated sort of topic because 
there's an obvious trade off to doing that, but there's a huge advantage to doing it too because you feel so good when they, yeah. they people feel so good when they yeah. do it. Or in other words, if you don't do something about this, if you don't learn what's causing this drop in testosterone and sperm count, the survival of the human race is legitimately at stake here. So in this video, we're gonna go over all the different things in our modern world that are attacking your testosterone right now, along with what you can do about it. And as you're gonna see, this list is very, very long. Over the last several years, the U.S. Geological Survey has tested the water. It found that something in the water is tampering with the hormones of 85% of the male smallmouth bass and a quarter of the male largemouth bass and causing them to develop female reproductive traits. Actually, scientists call it male feminization. I mean, it's literally termed male feminization. Wow. If you expose animals to enough of these chemicals, you can turn a male frog into a female or a male animal into a female and all this kind of thing. Stay dangerous and this is the downfall of man. Soy was first brought into the US in 1804, American dairy farmers went crazy for it. This simple little bean was super cheap and super high in protein, which made it great for feeding cows. But soy also contains something else, extremely high levels of estrogen. If you don't know, estrogen is to females what testosterone is to males. Estrogen is what makes women women. But when estrogen levels become too high, especially in males, it can lead to a whole lot of problems like infertility, low testosterone, slow growth, shrinking muscle mass, and weight gain. And soy happens to have more estrogen than any other bean in existence. Now seriously, one cup of soybeans has the equivalent amount of estrogen as 20,000 cups of chickpeas, which made soy the perfect food for farmers to fatten up their cows. Thanks to the high estrogen content, American farmers could feed their cows soy, and the estrogen would make cows super, super, super fat. And the fatter they got, the more money the farmers stood to make. And sure, it probably wasn't great that these farmers were force feeding estrogen to their cows and therefore force feeding us estrogen through their meat and milk, but who cares? The cows were now bigger and juicier than ever, so no one complained. Soy became a miracle crop for the American meat industry, but soy also became great for the food industry as a whole. Here was a super cheap protein alternative that could be molded into anything your heart desired. And so soy flourished amongst big food. Food companies all over the US started to create their own cheap soy food derivatives. Things like soybean oil, soy protein isolate, and soy flour were quickly seeping into the American food supply. Lay's chips could be fried in a blend of cheap canola, corn, and soy oil. Campbell's chicken noodle soup would get a dash of soy protein isolate. And IM's dog food would get soybean meal. And before you know it, soy started to be found in so many different foods. Some Americans were switching from beef burgers to soy burgers. French fries were fried in soy oil. And soy-based formula was getting fed to babies. But little did these soy guzzlers know that eating all this estrogen on a daily basis would lead to some unexpected consequences. It's interesting because all scientists agree that soy acts like estrogen. Even the vegan scientists like that are defending it and stuff, they say, of course it acts like estrogen. But it's not just the actual soybean that was now killing testosterone, it's also what grew on soy. See, after soy is harvested, it's usually stored for months and months and months in dingy storehouses. And what happens when you store food products for months and months and months in dingy storehouses? Mold will start to grow on the beans. That's right, the same mold that you find in a dark, damp basement is floating in your cup of soy milk. And guess what? That mold is also highly estrogenic. They analyzed serum mycoestrogen. That's estrogen secreted by molds found in grains. We're going to talk about that. And they looked at 30 girls with early puberty, 30 girls that were healthy, and they found found high levels of mold estrogen in the girls with early puberty. What else did they find though? More interestingly, they found the girls were bigger, they fatter, they had more weight. This mold estrogen has a chemical resemblance to anabolic agents used in animal breeding. And there's other papers that say the same thing. They talk about how farmers used to use this specifically to fatten cows. Maybe they still do, but they actually would inject it and use it as a drug, mold estrogen. It makes the animals fatter, it makes the girls fatter too. That's right, all those bad side effects you get from eating too much soy? Well, it's doubly bad if the soy has mold on it. So all these high estrogen food products that have become the norm in society are just silently crushing your testosterone and causing you to have all these bad side effects. So if you haven't already, it's time to cut all this artificial food out. And when it comes to beef, only eat grass-fed beef. But cutting out artificial food is just the first step because the next thing you have to avoid like the plague is the water supply.
Here's the thing, America is on a lot of pharmaceutical drugs. Painkillers, antidepressants, ADHD medication, and a ton more are being used by millions of people on a daily basis, with one of the most widespread drugs being birth control. And here's the thing about birth control. When someone takes a birth control pill or any other drug, they usually only end up absorbing 10% of it. The rest of that drug gets peed out, which then gets flushed down the toilet, which then makes its way to water treatment facilities. The only problem is most birth control pills contain something called ethanol estradiol, a type of estrogen. So all this estrogen and other terrible chemicals make their way into the water treatment facilities, and then it gets sent straight back to your tap. Problem is, most water treatment facilities don't have the capabilities to filter out all these chemicals. Think about it, these facilities are ancient. They're not advanced enough to filter all this out, so these pharmaceuticals and birth control pills are not getting filtered out of your tap water. That's why in 2021, seven different water facilities in Kentucky all had artificial estrogen in their water supply. And you don't even have to be chucking huge amounts of estrogens for it to mess you up. Even a small amount can cause damage. Even contact with this water through your shower can cause damage. It was found that male fish that swim in water that contain low levels of artificial estrogens from birth control ended up developing feminine traits. These male fish literally started to produce eggs in their testicles, and these horrifying changes in their hormones were passed down through the generations, which means a male fish who was exposed to estrogens would continue to produce offspring with deformities, whether or not he was still swimming in the estrogenic water, which is really horrifying. And this is the same water that is coming out of your sink and shower faucet right now. And we're not just talking about pharmaceuticals here. We haven't even touched on the microplastics in your water, the lead in your water, waterborne bacteria, forever chemicals, fluoride, and more. There's an old viral clip of Alex Jones screaming about, they're turning the frogs gay, they're turning the frogs gay. And that's all anyone remembers, right? They don't remember the context of that. But long story short, there was studies ran on this, you know, water in London. What happens is, you know, you have a population of women on birth control and they, they urinate. And that's the same water that ultimately ends up in the drinking water. The current water, you know, infrastructure doesn't do a good job of filtering everything out. And so there's trace levels of astrazine across the board, which has been shown to bike estrogen and, and all this stuff. And so what Alex is screaming about is in London, they ran studies on these actual frogs, which has been exposed to extremely high levels of astrazine and the frogs were their mating patterns that changed. They turned gay. And so it makes you wonder, right? As humans who are drinking tap water on a day in day out basis, what kind of impact does this have on our own endocrine systems? And one would think that it's extremely estrogenic and influences male behavior in a way that probably isn't healthy. This is Robert Oliver, by the way. He's the founder of the Genius brand which you've probably seen on Amazon. He's a good friend and overall great guy that has always been obsessed over optimizing his health. Now back to the water supply. Not even bottled water is completely safe. Because whenever you see purified water on a bottle, that just means they bottled up tap water to sell it to you. Except now it's in a plastic bottle which is full of something called phthalates. Which, you guessed it again, also mimics the effects of estrogen in your body. So what water is safe? Well, you want to stick to just drinking natural spring water that comes in a glass bottle. We looked into it and these are the brands we recommend. Mountain Valley, Aquapana, and Antipodes Sparkling Water. Not sponsored, although it should be. These were the only three spring water brands that we found that didn't contain fluoride, forever chemicals, and other harmful chemicals. But even if you avoid the soy and tap water completely, the attack on testosterone doesn't end there because we are just scratching the surface. Phthalates, parabens, and APEs. These are other estrogenic chemicals that are literally found everywhere. They're in the air, in pesticides, and in almost every cosmetic, skincare, and cleaning product in existence. They're even on printed receipts. But the most serious or enriched source of BPAs are things like printed receipts. That new trendy body wash you just bought? Yeah, that's full of artificial estrogens called APEs. APEs are the key ingredient that makes soap sudsy. So while you're lathering yourself up with your body wash, these APEs, which are full of estrogen, get absorbed right into your skin. So basically people are rubbing estrogen on their skin with their soap. Mm. And it, it loves to go through your skin. It doesn't want to wash out in the water. It wants to stay on your skin. I mean, the fragrance stays on, right? So basically, when you, you can rub up against things that get estrogen on you and you absorb them in your skin. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. APEs have been linked to spontaneous abortion in humans and mice, and zebrafish embryos that were exposed to APEs experienced genetic changes just two weeks later. So this stuff is potent. There's also phthalates, which are found in children's toys, plastics, and perfumes. One study found that pregnant women who used perfume had 167% more phthalates in their urine than women who didn't use perfume. 
And even if you avoid the conventional skincare products, you are still getting exposed. BP, an estrogenic chemical used in plastic, has been found in indoor air samples, which includes public offices, barbershops, and cars. So yeah, that new car smell is actually the sweet, sweet smell of estrogen. That, you know that new car smell? Yeah. That, that's actually estrogen too. Like that's plastic, but it's the oh. chemical is called phthalates. They're actually a little bit attractive to us, right? Like we like that new car smell because it, mm -hmm. it, it tricks our body. We think that's estrogen. Other chemicals that are disruptive for testosterone. Organophosphates, those are things found in all the, you know, fertilizer and chemical cleaners out there. Things like mercury, like fish nowadays, incredibly high mercury, mercury levels. Like if you eat an exclusively tuna diet, you'll likely get mercury poison. We know this is extremely disruptive for testosterone. And so it feels like it's just coming at men from all angles. So what this means is that the US is a giant cesspool of toxic estrogens, and there is no slowing this down. Countries like China and Europe have banned estrogenic chemicals. Meanwhile, America can't seem to get enough. That's because APEs, phthalates, and parabens make corporate America go round. Think about it like this. Why would a farmer waste money on organic farming methods when they can just spray highly toxic pesticides on their produce? Why would McDonald's put up with stale bread when they could just sprinkle on an estrogen called azodicarbonamide, also known as yoga mat material, to make their buns more soft? And as a mega corporation whose entire livelihood depends on these chemicals, you need to make sure that nothing will ever get in the way of you using these chemicals in your products long term. That's why you publish scientific studies that show just how safe and harmless these artificial estrogens can be. And in these studies, you make sure to use vague terms like unlikely, just like you did in this study, saying that atrazine, a highly estrogenic pesticide, is unlikely to cause breast cancer. You're not saying it doesn't cause breast cancer, you're just saying that it's unlikely that it will cause breast cancer. See what we did there? Just keep it vague and no one will ask questions. Never mind that 12 years later, another study comes out saying that atrazine absolutely does cause breast cancer and seriously hinders your immune system. You just need to make sure that your miracle chemical stays legal for as long as possible. And those scientists that you're paying to run these studies are more than happy to do whatever you say. Think about it, some of them just graduated college. And if you or daddy government gives them a grant to find the benefits of estrogenic chemicals on your behalf, they better find some benefits or they will starve. Estrogenic chemicals have made a very select few extremely rich. But it's not just the products that are leading to the downfall of man, it's also the culture. And this is a touchy one. At a societal level, it's kind of being thrown down men's throats. Like in high fashion, like dresses are acceptable for, for men. You know, there's just less and less talk of what it, it started with the whole toxic masculinity thing and just the idea that being a man in any sort of capacity was like a negative, right? Caused harm and damage. And so, yeah, I mean, that's it to me. When you have celebrities like wearing dresses and parading that around, it tends to have an impact. It's simple. If you condition men long enough to believe that it's bad to act like a man, it's going to have an impact. When you constantly tell men that the way they're acting is toxic, eventually you will wear them down. Yeah, do you think like this feminization of men is on purpose? Like from, from the people at the top, like they want this? You know, nowadays as I get older, I try not to get into too much of the conspiratorial stuff. Like it certainly feels like that. You know, it feels like, and if you do zoom out and I put my conspiracy hat back on, a population of weak men is gonna be dramatically easier to control, right? Just across the board. And so if you can feminize a population, the chances of any sort of upvolt or revolt or uprising are slim to none. And so gun to my head, I'd probably say a lot of it is intentional. I think a lot of it's probably not like plastics. It's just a, you know, it has an impact and there's no incentive for anyone to stop it, but it's really just a cheap material that one can make as a, you know, you know, the whole oil industry and all of that. And so I wouldn't label that per se as like intentional, but maybe it is. At the end of the day, the net result is much weaker men across the board. Yeah, I've never thought half of it is probably unintentional, like people just chasing the dollar or whatever. And the other half happens to align with and that result happens to align with the people in power like they want weaker men. So it, it's just like a convenient thing. Correct. And that it just, yeah, it seems like that across the board. When you have media kind of, that seems to be a good rule of thumb. When you have media aligned, mainstream media, 
idea aligned with one clear and definitive message, it's someone's probably influencing it in some capacity. And we've seen a pretty consistent talk track on what it means, you know, mas toxic masculinity, the erosion of gender roles, male and female are equal, if we can even define what that means. Estrogen levels are higher in men, men are being feminized. The last thing you want is a feminized male. What you want is a man who's learned to be a better man, alpha male, who can also take care of his children, be with his wife, be with his family, healthy testosterone levels. He's wearing a dress. Wearing a dress doing whippets. <laughs> is this, what, what the f I, I think was when you have low testosterone, you won't be motivated to do anything. These days, there's more female students enrolled in universities than male. In the 1950s, 70% of students were male. Now it's only 40%. Enrollment in sports is also going down. Testosterone has some very interesting effects on the brain. The major mental effect of testosterone is it makes effort feel good. Oh, that makes sense. While Gen Z is statistically less interested in sex compared to previous generations. But there is good news amongst all this doom and gloom. If you have low testosterone, if you suffer from some of the side effects like weight gain, low muscle mass, depression, facial hair loss, fatigue, you don't have any sex drive. If you suffer from any of that, there is a simple fix. Can you explain, like, can you actually naturally or mm -hmm. supplementally increase your testosterone? So to be super clear, when you get down to like making a huge difference in, in natural T levels, it needs to start with lifestyle. Like I mentioned earlier, obesity is by far the leading driver of like, you know, we know that definitively. If you're obese, if you're carrying excess body fat, it's negatively hurting your T levels. If you're not sleeping properly, negatively hurting your T levels. If you're over consuming sugar, plastic, like all of that has an impact. All right, let me just put kind of like my, my key priorities. Number one, at the top of everything, is sleep. N number two, and this is one that like I don't deal with or experience, but I see it out there. I think a lot of young men are ruined by their phones and the OnlyFans and the instant gratification, women and, and sexualization. I think that's a super real thing that has just a horrendous impact on testosterone. You know, they become these relationships. What's the word when someone like loves a YouTuber? Para, parasymbiotic or whatever, where you know a lot about the other person or you're obsessed about them and they don't know anything about you. And there's a generation of men on that, on Twitch. And so I think cutting that out is huge. Next is getting some level of, of sunlight in your day-to-day -day life. You know, the sun is the thing that's been supercharging us and powering us from the beginning of you know humanity and so don't be afraid to take your shirt off and and get out there next would be you know please cut out the plastics uh cut out the tap water i'd put those into the same kind of like extra bucket and then last but not least you know if you're in an area with limited sunlight invest in red light invest in red light therapy i think that's the the next best thing getting 15 20 minutes of that, that a day it can it can have meaningful impact on your testosterone levels yeah so sunlight seems like a very like a very small thing but you're saying that it. huge yeah it's that big of an impact huge the vitamin d like just there's all sorts of different signaling that i'm not smart enough to explain but i would say at the end of the day sunlight is probably you know at the top of that list right with sleep and all that and, and they all feed off each other like if you get your sunlight first thing in the morning you're setting your circadian rhythm in motion you're sleeping better you know there's stuff with your cortisol and stress levels and ultimately that cycle is what's going to feed healthy hormonal activity and what i've noticed in my own journey is that if you cut out all the artificial foods and tap water and you just exercise more that will get you pretty much 80 percent of the way there you'll look better and feel better than 80 percent of the population just by doing that but as we mentioned estrogenics are literally everywhere and short of living off the grid on your own homestead you're not going to be able to escape them chances are you're still going to have to interact with products or air molecules that have toxic stuff in it so if you want a little bit of a boost there are certain supplements that have been shown to increase testosterone like andrew huberman has talked about now for people that aren't getting prescribed TRT but want the increase in testosterone. There are these plant compounds like Tonga Ali and another one which is very interesting. It's a Nigerian shrub called Phadogia agrestis and it mimics luteinizing hormone which is the hormone that comes out of the hypothalamus that stimulates the testes if you got those and the ovaries if you've got those to make more testosterone or estrogen. And so those two herbal supplements together can give a significant boost in free and active testosterone. But the problem is the testosterone supplement space is super super sketchy which is why Rob decided to create Kingmaker. 
Kingmaker is the testosterone supplement to end all testosterone supplements that you can pick up by clicking the link below. Kingmaker contains 12 clinically studied ingredients. It does not have a proprietary blend, so you can actually see what's in it and what amounts on the label. And the way you can tell it's legit is because of the serving size. The serving size for Kingmaker is 5 capsules. That's right, you have to take 5 capsules a day. And although that may sound like a downside, if the serving size was just 1 or 2 capsules a day, it would literally be impossible for you to get the right doses of each ingredient for it to actually make a difference. And yet, that's what every other fake testosterone supplement does. Another way you know Kingmaker is legit is because of the price. Kingmaker is not cheap. Because Rob uses real ingredients in the right doses, it costs Rob as much money to make Kingmaker as what other fake testosterone supplements are selling for. I actually use Rob's products every single day myself and I love them. I can't recommend Kingmaker enough, so scroll down, click the link below, and buy a bottle for yourself. Click the link below to try Kingmaker now. Thanks to Kingmaker for being the sponsor of this video.